Good morning everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be my combined what I read in April and what I plan to read in the month of May. This is actually my like last reading wrap up in TBR in my dorm room and so it's making me a little sentimental. Um, but yeah, I just am combining these videos. My videos have been really poor um, the past semester honestly, but summer's coming. I am filming this on May 7th so I just have finals week left. And it's going to be a whole different content, I swear. Let's go ahead and hop into this video. We're going to start with what I read in April. I don't actually know how many books I read in April, so we're going to count. Um, but the first one is Icebreaker. I started this in March, and then I actually finished it on April 1st. Or no, sorry, I started, I started this back in February. It took me a very long time, and I finished it on April Fool's because it was a joke. Like, it was actually a joke, one star. Um, and my review just said, I don't ever want to discuss this book. So we won't. Okay, so we'll move on from that disappointment. The next book I read was actually fantastic. The next two books I read, and that was Once Upon a Broken Heart and The Ballad of Never After. I decided to read this. I had pre-ordered the paperback, and then I was gonna wait for the paperback release of A Ballad of Never After, but I was like, after this book, I can't wait. I read it on Libby. I can't wait to get a physical copy. And then I was like, okay, third book. Third book coming September, but now it's coming October. So I'm a little sad about that, but it'll be fine. This book, this series just like captivated me this semester. I read the original Carvel um, trilogy in February and it was all I could think about, all I was looking at on TikTok, um, Pinterest fan art. I, uh, I said it. <laughs> I meant to say you said it, not me, but I literally said it. Um, anyways, I love it so much. It's like a fairy tale. If you guys aren't even interested in fantasy, I still feel like you would like this series. Um, they say that you can read this trilogy be or before reading Carval or after. I actually think you should read it after. I think, I just think, same with like Six of Crows, I feel like having the background knowledge is helpful to understanding the universe, the characters, and all of that. So that's my personal opinion. Um, but yeah, these two books were five out of five stars. They were fantastic. A fun one, a girl here on YouTube recommends this series a lot. I actually forget. I think it's called the Never After series, but I believe this is the first book. It's Emily McIntyre. It's Hooked. It's basically a dark retelling of childhood fairy tales. And so this one was about Peter Pan, like Peter Pan story, Captain Hook and Peter Pan. Um, and so this, the thing about this series is it's darker. Um, and it also, um, the main villain of the fairy tale is... The main character hopefully that made sense i honestly i i really enjoyed it i think i rated it let's see i rated it three and a half stars i couldn't put it down it is a little intense it's very smutty it's a lot different than other books that i do like really like um like yes these are both fantasy like fairy tale type things but this is on a completely different level than this and i do prefer this um so yeah it's just fun it was it was a lot of fun to read actually and i want to read both scarred and wretched or wretched um so yeah, maybe those will be on the May TBR. This book I read, I rated three stars, and that is Dracula by Bram Stoker. This is the OG um, vampire story. If you know me, I love vampires. They're like my favorite mythical creature, I think. Um, yeah, this is pretty good, but it's just, I liked Carmilla more. Like, Carmilla was written before Dracula, and I like that one, so that's why this is three stars versus Carmilla, which is four stars. It was good. I like the writing style. I feel like I learned a lot like in the class with this as um, required text. Um, but yeah, it was interesting. It's so it's so cool having like actually read the original like what everybody takes inspiration from. So that's exciting. Next, I read Brick Lane by Monica Ali. Um, I read this for English 390. The book deals with like immigration within London and things like that, um, which I think is really cool reading from like different perspectives. It is fiction, um, but like all those same thoughts and feelings are there. And I thought it was really good. And the thing I appreciate about English classes is that I can read books like these that I probably never would have picked this up. I'm so glad I did. Um, and yeah, three stars. In most of my school books, three stars. It's nothing against them. They're just they're books that I am not picking out, so why would they be at like a super high star? Like I'm kind of being forced to read them, but three stars is good, I swear. The next one I read was actually Out of Love by Hazel Hayes. I actually borrowed this, so I don't have the physical copy, um, but I rated this four stars. It punched me in my freaking gut. It was so good. Um, wow, that's all I can say. I... <sighs> It just, books about breakups have really just, this past year, just so good. 
um, and so this one was incredible. I had never seen something be done like told from back to front and I just loved that. I loved it so much. I thought Hazel Hayes did a fantastic job and I'm shocked that this was a debut for her and I'm going to be reading whatever she publishes next. So we have Ferryman. I actually rated this one two and a half stars. This is a young adult fantasy. My boyfriend and I actually bought each other surprise books and this is what he got me. The thought was there it's a fantasy romance which I love but this one was just a little too young adult for me. Um, I think they're literally 16 in here and that like sometimes 16 is fine but usually the youngest I go is 17 and even that is like pushing it for me just to like understand relatability wise and like I feel like when I read I kind of put myself in their shoes and so I didn't like doing that here. Um, but yeah, it was an interesting concept. I definitely will not be continuing on with the series, but it was a fun read, and I'm glad I did it. It was different. It was adventurous, and yeah. Next one, oh my gosh, the best book of this month um, was Happy Place by Emily Henry. I also borrowed this one. I'm not going to be purchasing a hardcover. No, I will be purchasing a paperback. If that takes a year, oh well, I guess. Um, but yeah, this is five stars. I'm just going to read you my review because... It encapsulates everything. Emily Henry, you were an effing dog. This book ripped my heart out, Jack hammered it, then ate and digested it before shoving it back into place. If that doesn't explain how much this book tore me up, then you should read more of my reviews. This book is my absolute favorite Emily Henry novel. After going through a breakup in 2022, I knew this one was going to be a tearjerker. What I wasn't expecting was a self-discovery, mental illness, found family, and friendships, plus a breakup with a person you never thought you would break up with. Going to say that's not spoiler spoilers because this is all in the blur. Anyways, you need to read it. It hurts. It sucks, but it is worth the pain. I promise. Trust me, please. So that's it. It was fantastic. I didn't actually cry, but I did tear up, which is not like me in books, um, which means that she really got me. It did kick Beach Read out of first place um, just because of the content. I think it's solely because it's a breakup. If you haven't gone through a breakup, it's probably not going to be your favorite, but as like having gone through a breakup that was just like anyways I read for the month of April I feel like I actually read a good amount I was supposed to be keeping track and I didn't anyways I read a thousand boy kisses and I actually I read it and then I also listened to it so it was kind of doing a dual thing um but wow I did cry at the end um I knew what was gonna happen everybody knows what's gonna happen in this book but it still got me it's almost as if um uh, it's like if he had been with me it's a uh, it's it's really painful honestly um but it was fantastic i rated it four stars i don't know if i already said that i think the subtraction of this was just um probably i feel like the pacing was maybe a little bit weird at some points and that it's just a younger age i think they were again maybe 16 17 and that's a little too young for me but it's still really good and i'm glad i read it um yeah those are all the books i read in april and it's so exciting because now we're seven days into may and i've already read two books but i'm not going to tell you what i'm just going to tell you what i plan to read on or i'm just going to tell you what i plan to read in may so here's my tbr my tbr i do want to talk about my first dnf i've never dnf'd a book I have DNF'd Dinner Vipers. I believe I did this in April. If I if I've ever if I've already done this in my March wrap up, I'm gonna be extremely embarrassed. But I'm pretty sure I DNF'd this in the month of April. It feels like April was such a long time ago, but also like I'm still in April and it's just so weird. Um, but yeah, I got about halfway through. I'll leave my bookmark in there if I ever decide to uh, to go back to this. I probably won't though. Um, yeah, it was just bad. I, that's it. Now time for my May TBR. So the first book we have is a new release and that is Meet Me at the Lake by Carly Fortune. Um, it released May 2nd so it's only been out for about five-ish days. Um, and this says, Fern Brookbanks has wasted far too much of her adult life thinking about Will Baxter. She spent just 24 hours in her early 20s with the aggr aggravatingly attractive idealistic artist, a chance encounter that spiraled into a day-long adventure in the city. The timing was wrong, but their connection was undeniable. They shared every secret, every dream, and made a pact to meet again one year later. Fern showed up, Will didn't. At 32, Fern's life doesn't look at all how she once imagined it would. Instead of living in the city, Fern's back home running her mother's lakeside resort, something she vowed to ne never to do. The place is in disarray, her ex-boyfriend is the manager, and Fern doesn't know where to begin. 
She needs a plan, a lifeline. To her surprise, it comes in the form of Will, who arrives nine years late, suitcase in tow, and an offer to help on his lips. Will may be the only person who understands what Fern's going through. But how can she possibly trust his expensive suit, wearing Mirage, who seems nothing like the young man she met all those years ago? Will is hiding something, and Fern's not sure she wants to know what it is. But ten years ago, Will backs her rescue Fern. Can she do the same for him now? Read more to find out. Um, yeah, I'm gonna read this this month. The next one, and this is finally, finally, this book I've been reading um, for a specific video. We are getting it done this month. From Frankenstein, this is about a couple. I will just read it. New York is slipping from Cleo's grasp. Sure, she's at a different party every other night, but she barely knows anyone. Her student visa is running out, and she doesn't even have money for cigarettes. But then she meets Frank. 20 years older, Frank's life is full of all the success and excess that Cleo's lacks. He offers her the chance to be happy, the freedom to paint, and the opportunity to apply for a green card. She offers him a life imbued with beauty and art and hopefully a reason to cut back on his drinking. They're everything he each other needs right now. Theo and Frank run headfirst into a romance that neither of them can quite keep up with. He shapes their lives and the lives of those around them, whether that's Cleo's best friend struggling to embrace his gender identity in the wake of her marriage, or Frank's financially dependent sister arranging sugar daddy dates after being cut off. Ultimately, this chance meeting between two strangers outside of a New Year's Eve party changes everything for better or worse. So yeah, this is a de debut novel by Coco Mellers. I love books that are set in the UK, and I actually got this in the UK, which I just think is really cool because, like, it has pounds on here for the pricing. Um, yeah, I'm really excited about this one. I just have two more physicals, and that is The Night Circus. I have been craving just romance ever after reading The Ballad of Never After and Once Upon a Broken Heart. I think that's what it's called. Um, but yeah, I really want to read this. I'm not going to read the back because my battery is dying, so I'm sorry. But this is a, it reminded me of Carval a little bit, especially from the title, and I feel like there's really polarizing opinions on this book, but I'm hoping that it'll be good enough to just read, I think it's like 600 pages. It is a pretty thick book, um, but hopefully it'll like transport me into a little fantasy and romance realm. Um, so yeah, excited about this one. This physical book I have is my boyfriend actually, this is his favorite book and he wants me to read that, and it is Red Rising by Pierce Brown different than what I normally read, but I have read Dune, which is like the ultimate sci-fi, so I feel like I could definitely do this. Um, it says, I live for the dream that my children will be born free, she says, that they will be what they like, that they will that they will own the land their father gave them. I live for you, I say sadly. Io kisses my cheek, then you must live for more. Ooh, that's kind of good. His wife taken, his people enslaved, driven by a longing for justice and the memory of lost love, Dara will stop at nothing to bring down his enemies, even if he must become one, become one of them to do so. So, it sounds a little different, but we'll see, we'll see. That is my April wrap-up and my May TBR. Sorry for rambling so much. Um, but yeah, this is the last one in this setting. Hopefully you enjoy it. I got a new mirror for the apartment. Moving vlogs coming soon. That is the end of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Peace and love. Bye, guys.